A warm greeting, today is Sunday, August 27, 2023. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In this video, I'll be providing a brief update on the forecast for Tropical Depression No. 10, which is close to becoming Tropical Storm Adalia. At the time of recording this video, it's 7 in the morning local time in the Western Caribbean and the state of Florida, where preparations are underway for the effects associated with this cyclone. Over the past night, we've observed that the center of circulation of Tropical Depression No. 10 has been moving towards the south-southeast as forecasted. Slowly but surely, it has continued to organize. So, it's possible that by 8 in the morning or 11 in the morning, it could become Tropical Storm Adalia. Let's take a closer look in the infrared satellite animation, where you can see that Tropical Depression No. 10 continues to generate thunderstorms to the south-southeast of Cozumel. We also see the development of some outer bands, indicating that the tropical depression is in the process of strengthening just east of the Yucatan Peninsula. The movement of the circulation center is also evident in the Doppler radar animation, where during the night, the circulation center moved very close to Playa del Carmen and crossed over Cozumel Island. Currently, it's located just southeast of Cozumel, and it's anticipated to move eastward and then northward to begin its trajectory between Quintana Roo and the western part of Cuba. It's over the Caribbean Sea where it is expected to become a tropical storm. Throughout the day today, several Hurricane Hunter aircraft will be investigating this area. This will provide us with better information about the structure of Tropical Depression No. 10 and will also help improve the trajectory and intensity forecasts. As this center moves slowly through the area, it will bring gusty conditions and some rain to regions of Quintana Roo in Mexico and the western part of Cuba. For example, let's look at the wind gust projections according to the GFS model. Pinar del Rio could experience wind gusts between 70 to 80 km per hour between tonight, Sunday, and Monday. Currently, it seems that the tropical storm force winds will stay to the east of Quintana Roo, areas like Playa del Carmen and Cancun shouldn't experience sustained tropical storm force winds. The future tropical storm Adalia will also bring some rainfall to the region, especially in western Cuba. From Havana to Pinar del Rio, they could receive between 80 to 90 mm of accumulated precipitation over the next 48 hours. For northern areas of Quintana Roo, it could be between 50 to 60 mm over the next 48 hours. During the morning today, there is a good consensus in terms of the forecast for the trajectory of the future Hurricane Adalia. As you can see, essentially all models predict a north-northeastward movement, and it's forecasted that the circulation center would enter Florida, specifically near Taylor County. While it's predicted to arrive as a Category 1 or Category 2 hurricane, there is still some uncertainty since some specialized models strengthen it to a Category 3 hurricane. We can't dismiss this possibility at the moment. It's important to mention that the Hurricane Hunters aircraft and the data collected today will definitely help improve these intensity forecasts. During the afternoon and evening hours, we will have a better idea of how strong it might hit the state of Florida. Also, note that in its path, it would pass over southern Georgia and southern South Carolina. These states will experience tropical storm conditions. Now, let's look at the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. You can see that the future tropical storm Adalia will continue moving northward over the next two to three days. There's a tropical storm warning for parts of northern Quintana Roo and for Pinar del Rio in Cuba. Then, as it approaches Florida and by Tuesday afternoon, it's expected to become a Category 1 hurricane as it continues to strengthen and approach the state of Florida. Between Wednesday morning and afternoon, it would cross over Georgia. By early Thursday morning, it could reach South Carolina as a tropical storm. Also, note the long-term projection that it might pass over parts of southern North Carolina. If we zoom in a bit on this area, you can see that the National Hurricane Center is forecasting the circulation center to enter Taylor County in Florida, between the city of Tallahassee and Gainesville. Although we're quite confident that this is the area where the circulation center will enter, Remember that the cone of uncertainty extends to the east and west, so northern and central Florida should stay attentive to the bulletins over the coming days. Additionally, there's a strong consensus among the top two global models. Here, we have the American model showing a Category 2 hurricane entering around Tallahassee in the afternoon hours of Wednesday. The European model shows a trajectory very similar to what the National Hurricane Center indicates, with a Category 1 hurricane entering Taylor County in the afternoon of Wednesday. There's a solid consensus between these two top models, giving us confidence in this forecast. Take a preliminary look at the expected effects related to the future Hurricane Adalia. You can see that some tropical storm winds could affect the central and northern regions of the Florida Peninsula, including cities like Tampa, Springfield, Gainesville, and Jacksonville. The strongest winds will be where the circulation center makes landfall, between Tallahassee and Taylor County. In this area, 
wind gusts exceeding 95 miles per hour are possible. It's important for the northern region of Florida to prepare for a hurricane ranging from Category 2 to Category 3, and also for southern Georgia. Well, that's all for the morning update today. We're keeping a close eye on the 8 a.m. bulletin to see if Tropical Storm Adalia has formed. I'll be updating this forecast during the afternoon or evening hours today. Until then, farewell.